Hello, Ginger. Hi, is this Paul? Yes, hi. Hi, Paul, how are you? Good, you're on with me, Denise, and Andrew, who's affectionately known as Big A. Hello, Ginger, how are you? Hello, Denise, I'm good, and Big what? Big, big A. Big A for Andrew. Good, Ginger. Okay, <laughs> I, I heard big and I got all excited. <laughs> no, the only I was gonna say, unfortunately, his uh, big don't fit his uh, package. Oh, uh, <laughs> and, and you know this from experience? Uh, it but, was on the internet. Yeah, I was gonna say he accidentally had a little uh, incident on the internet and yeah. uh, it got passed around. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we were all you'll, we were you'll all. Have to give me the link. Yeah, I, I can email. I'll, I'll email you right after the show. But uh, yeah, no, we were all involved with the Opie and Anthony show, and Big A was one of the bigger characters on the show, metaphorically speaking. And he was trying to get some pussy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he was on Pow Talk, which is one of those room chatty things, kind of like Skype, but right. before. And some girl from Australia decided she'd hit on him and tell him, you know, oh, I love you on the show, Big A, and all this. You know, and of course, she was just recording him jacking off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that video made its way across the Atlantic, uh, sorry, across the Pacific, and was played on the Opie and Anthony show the next day. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I yeah. love it. <laughs> it, was fuck, it was fucking funny. It was so funny. Right, Big A? Well, Big A's gonna, it's hilarious, right, Big A? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He didn't want to be reminded of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so let's get this let's get this bit out of the way before my wife kicks my ass. You, Tracy <laughs> Lords, and Anne Boleyn were the first porn I ever watched. So uh, just to get that out of the way, so that she, <laughs> she's totally convinced that I want someone you know of your background on the show because I'm a hornbag. He is a hornbag. Well, bag. most men are. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if, if we if we I'm, want. I'm... <laughs> I'm sitting at home and I'm, I'm a huge hockey fan and the Blackhawks are my team. Ah. And uh, on every break, on every one in between periods, uh, my boyfriend gets a blowjob. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I understand. Oh, sure. I, I'm going to start part. playing, watching hockey, baby. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ginger. We'll talk to you later. We're oh, gonna go sweetheart. <laughs> I would do things like that if there was money put on my end table. I told you, you get when you pay up. Well, you're not getting at See, fucking. I love sucking cock. Yeah. I just, I, I just love it. I love, su <laughs> I love sucking pussy. So we could probably work something out. <laughs> I love that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Big A, maybe you got a shot. <laughs> did, did you have you ever been, have you ever been like working at the Bunny Ranch at all? Have you ever done the uh, the thing with the fans, or you never really did that? No, I never really did that. I, you know, believe it or not, I, I'm shy. When it comes to a lot of things, okay. and I, I guess there would be just too much pressure, you know. My and, and you know, I might do. Are you? I have to live up to my own reputation. Right. <laughs> yeah. So no, I never went that route, and uh, I, I, I've been fortunate to have a lot of great sex, you know, in in my personal life as well as on film. Right. Yeah. I get. I, you know what though? I think that most guys, even if you were a sack of potatoes laying there, they'd be like, "Holy shit! I fucked Ginger Lynn." Like, you know what I mean? Even if, even if you, then no one, no one's gonna tell you, you that you were fucking awful. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be crying. Yeah. It would just be awful. Right. <laughs> no, but I do live in Las Vegas, so the Bunny Ranch is close. Right. I've been thinking of making a making a run over there. I haven't had me any any strange pussy in a while. The last girl I had was Jocelyn James. Ah, oh, there you name dropper. <laughs> <laughs> Which lives here in Vegas too, but I do get to look pussy. I have this sneaky little way that I do it. Mm -hmm. um, I I have an, a, a website that's an auction site called. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, yeah. Gingerlandauctions right. com, right? Right. So what I do is I have all these beautiful women come over and they bring their lingerie, and we're shooting. And whenever we get ready to put the dildo inside of their pussy, I always say, "Do you want some lube, or would you rather have spit?" Every girl says spit, and then my next line is. Would you like mine or yours? So I slip right in there. <laughs> okay, and I thought this was going to be an interview with a lady that used to do porn. <laughs> My wife's just sitting there going, oh, God, okay. <laughs> no, I'm like, my mouth is dropped like, what? <laughs> well, just because I stopped doing it in front of the camera does not mean that I stopped doing it behind the camera. <laughs> are, are you ever going to get back in front of the camera? Or is it all about no. how much money? I bet a million dollars you get back in the front of the camera. Come on. Yeah, for a million dollars, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were actually, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking to Honey Boo Boo. 
And the, the, I don't know oh, if you ever, I love that show. Yeah, we were talking to Mama June and Honey Boo Boo, <laughs> and Vivid Vivid offered Mama June a million dollars to do a porno. <laughs> Did she accept? No. Oh. <laughs> Thank God. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to see her naked. Yeah. No. It would be really. such a train wreck. I would have to watch. I would <laughs> have to watch. I watch. Hey, Big A, you might have a chance. <laughs> next week. Um, You're doing a porn? No, no. Next <laughs> Big A, Big A has a speech impediment. In case you're wondering why there's this massive pause, we're not we're not making fun of him. He just it takes a minute to get it out. Go ahead, Big A. What are you no doing next worries. week? Actually, November fifteenth. Um, I'm going to Vegas for a week. Actually, all right. She's not going to fucking invite you over to her house, Andrew. So I just say that. Are you, are you hoping to get a hooker? Big A, are you hoping to get a hooker? Get no. some pussy while you're out there. Well, the Bonnie Ranch is actually miles away from Vegas. It's near Reno. It's not like right there, but people think it's oh, in Vegas. Yeah. It's not fucking even close. You oh, know? it's not. Well, it's not that close, right? It's it's like what is it like? I wouldn't know. Twenty five miles Vegas. south of Re Reno, I think it is. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I haven't been there. Yeah, I'm surprised. I you know there. what? You I I be you don't need to go there. What are you doing? No, 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 I just, you know, it's been a while, like I said, since I've had any strange pussy, so I'm Jones in a little bit. <laughs> See, I, the idea of a freeway with my wife is, like, really, really high on my list of things I want to do. And even if I have to... What like, does your wife look like? Does she have dark hair? Yes. She looked... I love she, her. That's my, 20 years my ago, girl. 20 years ago, she looked exactly like Marissa Tomei and my cousin Vinny. Oh... That she's so my type. I am so there. All right. Well, I'll get. I'll, 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 I'll give you. I'll text you my address after. <laughs> and I'll give my. I give my wife like five hundred dollars. And I'll five hundred. Uh, that's it. That's you, all I'm worth. Five hundred. No, five, you'll be getting pleasure too. So you like, I have thirty eight double D's. Okay. Ooh. My my breasts are beautiful. Big A's like. Oh well, I guess I feel like the third wheel here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big A can hold the camera. <laughs> what camera? I don't know. It's, it's, it's I'm just, we buy her own porn. Two hundred and fifty dollars you're getting if there's a camera because I gotta, I gotta sell the. I'll, I'll sell the video. Oh okay. Oh my god. I you're think funny. we have a. Let's see. There's three of you in the studio plus your wife. That's four plus me. That's five way. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> uh, I'm in. When, when, when are you coming to New York again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh hopefully God. for, I don't know if, uh, we're hoping for a theatrical release. I don't know if we'll get it. I, I'm in Rob Zombie's new film, 31. Yeah, I saw, I saw the, nice. I saw the promo yeah. for that, yeah. So if we get a theatrical release and there's a, a New York premiere, I will definitely be there. I, I, how big is your role in that movie? Pretty big, right? Um, it's, I, I play the leading man's girlfriend. So oh, wow. it's, it's a decent role. That's yeah, I'm cool. his girlfriend. I remember you in Young Guns too. Oh, you know what? It's so funny. I'm writing my book right now, mm -hmm. and this afternoon I was writing the when I first meet Charlie Sheen. I'm right to that point in the book where I'm on the set of Young Guns 2, and Charlie flies in to meet me, and I just, the last paragraph I wrote was when he took his ring off. It was Valentine's Day, and we were in his room. His fiance called. That's <laughs> always so good. I heard him, <laughs> Kelly Preston, I heard him say, Happy Valentine's Day. I love you, too. He hung up the phone, took his ring off, and we had sex for the first time. <laughs> All right, I wasn't going to hit on the Typical Charlie Sheen. cheating. I, I wasn't going to ask about the Charlie Sheen thing so quickly, but I'm going to have to go now, since you brought it up. Did you read a, an article in Radar Online? I think it was in the last week where they talked about uh, a really, really, really big name celebrity where they wouldn't name who it was, but it was a guy that was really promiscuous and had been with a ton of women, really well known. Who found out he had HIV and now he's avoiding people for like six months and no one's really even seen this guy. I'm thinking oh, it's, it no, sounds. I heard. It's you should look it up on Radar Online. I my first person who came to mind was Charlie Sheen. He's definitely a horn dog. Oh my god! I hope that's not true. Yeah. Well, I don't know who it is. I'm not. I'm, I'm not out. saying it was definitely <laughs> right. him, but you know, I read the article and I'm like, oh, that because he hasn't been around lately, so that kind of matches up, which is even worse. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he, he has rehab. a tendency to do that. Right. He'll he'll go out and go, you know, just balls out and do everything that he shouldn't do, and then take a little time to recover. So hopefully, he's just in one of his okay. I need to get my shit together modes for a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would help. Yeah, I'm just looking at the article. Hollywood superstar desperate battle with AIDS revealed. Uh, 
top one of Hollywood's top mega stars, a bad boy Tinseltown star, is hiding an explosive secret. Multiple sources have confirmed a world famous actor who we're not revealing has contracted the deadly virus. The middle-aged star learned at least two years ago he had HIV, but hid it from the world because he thought his fans wouldn't support him anymore because he's got it. Ooh, I'm going to have to do, make a few phone calls. Yeah, on, if you find out who it is, you give me a call back. I want an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the last girl that he was he was with for the last uh, year or so, the last girl he's been talking, I, I, I just shot her, actually, so I, I, I can't tell you her name, but right. if anyone would know, she would know, so I'm going to make some phone calls tomorrow. Right. I, I, it might not be him. It, it just that's the first name that came came to mind. You know. There's a lot of really really wild men in in Hollywood that you wouldn't think. I remember when I first moved out here, uh, and I started doing porn. There was a an actress by the name of Lori Smith. She wasn't really big. Didn't do a whole lot of films, but you know we made friends. She was on one of my sets, and she invited me over to one of her friends' house. And I go over to this this house, and it, it's uh, an Academy Award winning actor. He's got, he's like one of my favorite favorite actors. And I'm just, I'm shy and I'm nervous and I'm excited. Twenty and minutes later, you're fucking the guy. No, oh, okay. no, his thing, <laughs> his thing. It was I'd never seen this before in my life. Was to smoke uh, c cocaine. I don't know what you call it when you smoke cocaine, whatever it's called, but. Mm. He would, he would take it off of a pipe, wanted me to get on my hands and my knees, blow the air into my butt, and then have me <laughs> fart it back out. And this, uh, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah. <laughs> and this, like, if you knew who this was, you'd go, no fucking way. Yeah, oh you're probably God. right. You're probably right. You, you, did you, they, didn't, they didn't ask you to shit on a glass table after that, did they? No, no, no. And that was all of 21 years old. And, I'm, you know, I'm with one of my idols, and I'm just going, okay, this is the most bizarre thing ever. And there's things like that that I can't put in my book. I can put it in there, but just I, I don't want to change the fuck name. up my Hollywood no, chances by, by outing people. Yeah, you have to be really careful because sometimes you can be vague but not vague enough, and people start to figure it out, you know? Yeah, uh, this one I'll, I I won't give enough clues. Right. You no, know, Academy Award winners. There's yeah. enough of them out there. That you got, you, you got to put no some stories. You got to put some stories in there. You know, it, that, I, I read Tracy Lord's book. That's a really good book, I, and I look forward to reading yours. I mean, I've been reading some background on you, obviously, for the interview. Because obviously, bef bef when we you know we scheduled you on, you the first the only thing I knew was you know your your porn history and then your movies you've been doing since then. But I wanted to do right. a bit more research. So let I just wanted if you wanted to talk a little bit about you know how how you when what made you decide to move from Illinois to to Hollywood and that you know what was the fam was the family issues or well I had always wanted to be to, to live in California when I was uh, like nine or ten I used to put plays on my in my garage and I would dance and sing and I had my backup singers and and I would charge everybody five cents to come and see the show. <laughs> so I had two backup singers, and, and it was awful. I, would, I, I remember dancing to Mr. Bojangles and Cher's song, uh, Cherokee, Cherokee Woman, Cherokee mm -hmm. Tribe, that, that song, and just Soldier Boy, all these really old records that my mom had. And I was planning on moving to California with my grandparents, but fell in love with a boy and didn't move here. Well, my grandparents still moved. My grandfather had a heart attack, and I was working at um, a bar that night. I had three jobs, and I was uh, a cocktail waitress, and I remember getting the phone call that my grandfather had a heart attack, and they said, if anybody can make him want to live, it's you. So I flew out to California, and my grandfather lived for about two weeks before he passed. Uh, at least you got to see him, right? Um, I had to go figure that I, out. Uh, oh, he was just the most amazing man in the world. And funny little story here I you know went shopping in California was all different than Illinois and I bought these turquoise and black leopard tight pants I bought a red and black shirt it was kind of at that point in time kind of punk rock looking mm -hmm. and that's the outfit that I wore you know I, I went to the hospital to visit my grandfather wearing that outfit and the last words he ever said to me was you have too much perfume on and I was wearing that outfit, and I wore that outfit six months later in, uh, oh, not between the cheeks, uh, New Age Hookers. Oh, wow. 
That was, that was one of Tracy Lord's country. movies that they had to edit after they found out That's she was. Right. Yeah, I remember that one. See, yeah, in, in, in England, your, your movies were illegal for the longest time. Not yours specifically, but just hardcore porn was totally it's illegal in England. When we when we started film, when I filmed all of my first two years and, and three months, it was illegal. So we, you know, everything. Well, the way I got into it, I'll backtrack a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, was I was also not only working at the bar, but I worked at a place called Musicland, which is a record store. And I walked into one of the Musicland stores in Southern California and said, oh my God, I'd love to work here. Well, they, I was an assistant manager in Illinois. They doubled my salary, made me a troubleshooter, and gave me seven stores to turn around from the red to the black, which was fantastic. Right. And I thought living in California was going to be fun and free and everything was cheap and easy. And Oh, my God, it was so expensive. So I, <laughs> I, I wasn't making enough money to live. I was working like 70 hours a week. And I answered an ad in the paper that said, figure models wanted. Five hundred to five thousand dollars per day. Wow. The day that I went into a uh, world modeling agency, I did my test shots for Penthouse, and I shot for Penthouse the very next day. Now, when you went in there to do that, were you intending to do nude modeling, or are you just intending to do glamour? You didn't, and they just kind of pushed you into it. What happened? Well, no, I knew it would be nude modeling. I, you know, I figured that part out pretty quickly. I'm five foot two. There's no way that I'm going to. Yeah, right. <laughs> we like we like you to walk down a catwalk. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not not going to work. Yeah. So like I, I knew that it was going to be nude modeling, and and I had no problem with that. I grew up with Playboys laying on the on the end table and penthouse forum in the little basket in the bathroom next to the toilet, and so I was always exposed to beautiful women and nudity. I never, I just, I never was uncomfortable with it. I didn't have a problem at all. Now your your so boy, I, your boyfriend didn't take you there and force you to do it. Tracy Lord's mom's boyfriend took her to the. No. Yeah, you know. No, and you know what? I don't believe that. I know Tracy really well. She's a cunt. Mm. I hope her tits rot and fall off. Yeah. <laughs> awful, I, awful I kind person. of, I kind of figured that you guys didn't get along <laughs> at this point. She's an I love awful it. Awful person. Yeah. <laughs> Was was it uh, what, was it true that you were supposed to testify in her case and you wouldn't, and then the IRS went after you, right? What happened was uh, the district attorney came to my house and um, said that they wanted me to testify against 64 adult film producers on behalf of Tracy Lord. I refused. The U.S. attorney came in and said, if you don't testify, we will make your life very difficult. My attorney recommended that I go before the grand jury, which I did. And one of the reasons that I say that Tracy's story is all bullshit is because I, I saw photographs that were taken by the feds while she was filming, like dozens of them on different locations, different sets. They wanted me to identify the people. If Tracy was forced into it and didn't know what she was doing and the feds knew why did they track her for almost a year? I believe that the whole thing was a setup that she was involved in it from day one. And I don't even believe she was underage. I think the right. whole thing is bullshit. I think the Mies Commission had a, a, a an issue with porn and that Tracy was part of trying to bring it down. So what happened was I, I went before the grand jury. They showed me all of these photographs. And I just, I'm very blonde and I have a very bad memory and I didn't recognize anyone. And five years later to the day, they knocked on my door again. They tried to charge me with tax evasion. A man by the name of Joe Walsh spent five years watching every movie that I ever did, reading every interview, looking at every every layout. And uh, they, like I said, they tried to charge me with tax evasion, but I paid my taxes. There was a $2,087.04 deposit into one of my accounts that did not have a 1099 to go along with it. It was not required by law that employers 1099 their employees at that time. Right. So what they charged me with was willfully subscribing to a false tax return. <sighs> and uh, I was facing six years. Wow. Um, I ended up doing four months and 17 days in federal prison. Oh, my wow. God. How was, uh, how was that? Reason, well, you, I bet you were really well, popular in there, itself. right? Oh my God! I went from wearing "come fuck me" shoes to "fuck you" shoes. Uh, it was it was awful. The first night that I got there, I had been in a holding tank for about twelve hours, and they transported me to the main prison. And it was probably about two o'clock in the morning, so all the everybody was on lockdown, and they 
they put me into a cell. They gave me a stack of clothes. It was somebody else's blood-stained underwear. It was Ooh. disgusting, gross. Um, that's what I had to wear. I crawled into the top bunk. There was no one in the bottom bunk and two ununiformed, two plainclothes guards came into my cell Hmm. and started talking about the way that I saw cock and how much they loved it. Now I'm petrified and I've done prison movies. So I'm, you know, thinking what's going to happen next. And they, what they did was they just started to laugh and they walked out. So they didn't do anything to me, but the next day, I called my attorney. You get uh, two five-minute phone calls mm-hmm. per day on a pay phone. I called my attorney, and he immediately called the Wall Street Journal. The word got out. Things were spread. And the next thing I know, 17 days, I was before the judge, and uh, my sentence was reduced. Good. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, my so, God. Hmm. But I would have thought that you were, I thought you would have loved it in a ladies' prison, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> uh, no, no, it was really scary. The, the The first day that I you know I woke up the next day, and uh, they were bringing a girl back from the infirmary. She was a a, a snitch, and what they did was they took her down to the last cell. Mm. They sodomized her with the toilet brush and put one of her eyes out. Oh my god! So these were not that I was yeah in they're not women dealers, you hang murderers. With. Yeah, I was not in some poopy little, you know, nice prison where all the girls are having sex. No, this was maximum security, MDCLA. Oh, my God. It was really fucking scary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, I used to be the comic, so I didn't get my ass kicked. I'm just wondering if you could have just stood in the middle of the room and said, hey, anyone who wants to have, have sex, let's go. You know. <laughs> well, the, the weird thing, the hard, and what made it even more difficult is there was one television in a common area. And I was on Entertainment Tonight. I was on all of the the, the the gossip shows. So there'd be 78, 80 women sitting around watching me on TV. I pretty much stayed to myself, but I made friends with two women that uh, one was named Juice, and she got me clean underwear and cigarettes. And the other woman's name was Juanita, and Juanita was a big girl. I never slept with her. But she kind of took me under her arm, so I, I was basically somebody's bitch. Mm-hmm. And she made sure nobody fucks with me. That was cool. Yeah. yeah I, at I least really you didn't have to me. fucking finger fuck her every night for that pleasure. Like they didn't. Remember Oz? You know, Oz fucking awful. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so going back to when you, you, know, you went to the agency, how did you make the, the transformation from doing just nude modeling into actually having sex on camera? Well, the first three months, all I did was pose for new magazines. And this is when, the, at the time when there were a million of them. You know, you, any newsstand, there were at least 20 different magazines that were being published. Right. And so I had nonstop work. And my agent one day said to me, we'd like you to do commercial. I thought they meant commercials like toothpaste and that yeah. kind of a thing, <laughs> not knowing that commercial meant sex on film. When I found out, I, I said that I would never do it. I wasn't that kind of a girl. I had the same stereotype image of women in the industry that a lot of people did, and some people still do. I thought that they were they were drug addicts and that they were hookers, and, you know, I just mm-hmm. I had a, a bad image of what type of girl did this. And one day I was sitting in my agent's office, and, and I walked in, and there was this beautiful girl with red hair, wearing a long white gown, and she had a script on her lap, and she was smoking a cigarette through a long cigarette holder, like they did in the old movies, and she's right. reading her dialogue, mm-hmm. and I, I said to her, you, you can't possibly be a porn star, and she said, yes, I am, and I was, I was mesmerized by this woman. She was intelligent. She was articulate. She was beautiful, and I took her to lunch and asked her every question I could think of, and I went back to my agent, and I said, okay, I'll do it, but here are my rules. I want cast approval, I want script approval, and I want this much money per per scene and this many scenes per movie. He was on the floor laughing hysterically. He thought I was completely insane. He said that only stars got to have that type of of treatment. So I said, fine, I'm not going to do it. And do you remember the gong show? Yep. There was a very tall blonde by the name of Svetlana Marsh. She was the girl that hit the gong when when it was time for the, when Chuck Barris said the, mm-hmm. you know, it was over. Right. Mm-hmm. So Svetlana and her husband, David, 
were doing their first porn movies. They were doing two films shot on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. They wanted a girl that had never been seen on film, that had a fresh face. They knew my, my terms. They agreed to them. And I went off to, to Kauai and made my first two movies there. I chose Jerry Butler as my leading man and uh, had the time of my life. I turned 21 while I was filming. I thought I would only make two movies, though, so I used my real name. My real name is Ginger Lynn Allen. Right. And uh, it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now you, when your parents found out, they weren't too impressed, right? No, you know, it was really awful. My father uh, walked into a video store, got the little token, put the token in the machine, and there I was sucking on Jeremy's dick. <gasps> okay, it oh would be God. bad enough for my dad to see me doing that to anyone but especially Ron Jeremy. He's such a pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So my dad comes out of the little booth. He goes to the counter and says to the guy, I want to buy every copy you have of this. And the guy said, there's no way. I'm not going to sell them to you. So my dad beats the guy up. Please come. Take my dad to jail. My dad calls my grandmother to come bail him out. My grandmother comes down, bails out my dad. They go back to the video store. My dad has my grandmother watch. Oh, my God. So now, you know, the, the cat's out of the bag. My family is not happy with me. I had not given my family my home phone number. They only had my pager because I knew that they were going to find out eventually. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of call from my, my paging company at like 6 in the morning. And they said, there's a family emergency. You need to call home. So I called my dad, and the first words out of his mouth were, what the fuck are you doing? Like, oh, oh. oh, So it took about six months for us to, to find a way that we could communicate again and understand each other. And I, I wrote my dad a long letter. I wrote him a 13-page letter that I actually have. He passed away in a motorcycle accident a couple of years ago, and oh, I got all of his things. And, and I found the letter that I wrote to him. And basically, I told him, I said, you know, you raised me to believe in myself, to never do anything I didn't feel good about, to treat family like friends, friends like family, not to judge. And I went through the list of all of the qualities that my father had instilled in me and that made me who I was. Mm -hmm. And I was proud of all of those things that, that I had become and by the choices that I made. And I, I said to him, if you're going to judge me, then I really don't want you as my father anyway. You're going against everything you've ever taught me. And uh, he called me up, and we, we had a long conversation. We cried. We yelled, uh, cried some more, and ended up becoming closer than we ever were. Uh, we talked about everything. My grandmother ended up taking my penthouse to bingo, showing everybody. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. I know. My, my dad started, he would do the conventions with me and be my bodyguard when I was signing autographs. And uh, when he passed, we were, my dad was my best friend. You know, we talked almost every single day. And, and you know, it, it, it probably made us closer than ever because we had this huge obstacle that we either dealt with or, or decided not to be family anymore. And we, we chose to deal with it. I think it was harder on my sister. You know, she's five years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she's starting high school and I'm Ginger Lynn. You know, so everybody knew, and I'm from Rockford, Illinois, which is, you know, it's not a huge town, so word spread very quickly, and, you know, everybody knew that she was Ginger Lynn's little sister. Did you ever try and get her in a porn? No. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so did your dad have to deal with, like, his friends saying, hey, you, that's, look at this? <laughs> well, luckily, my dad was a cop, and he was also oh, yeah. a biker. Oh, so, so he would have kicked your fucking ass. Right? <laughs> you know? uh, my dad, he was a scary guy. Mm -hmm. He was you know, the nicest guy you'd ever meet, but he would kick your ass in a heartbeat. And <laughs> so not a whole lot of people confronted him. The worst thing that I think ever happened was when my penthouse came out, my father walked into work one day, and on his desk, my, my, my spread, my layout was open, and there was mm -hmm. a little post-it note stuck to it saying, Please tell us how you raised your daughter so that we won't make the same mistake. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Which was really shitty. They didn't even have the balls to say it to his face. They put a little sticky on his, on his desk on, on my penthouse. But my dad just, he would, 
you know, like I said, not too many people confronted him, and the ones that did, uh, he pretty much just beat up. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's pretty crazy. It's weird because before we had this interview, Denise is like, ah, oh, this girl's going to, you know, she pretty much listed all the things that you said we think about porn women, you know, saying, oh, my God, I don't think I can talk to her, blah, blah, blah. And, and you're yeah, so much sure. different to what you expect. I got to tell you, <laughs> it's, it's, it's no, nice. You know to... what it is? It's so stereotyped. I mean, especially these days, more than back yeah, then. Yeah, like oh, absolutely. Most people who get into it, you know, nowadays, I mean, are like they say, said like crackheads, or they're desperate for money. You know, their parents they had you know bad relationships. They're out on the street. They get into child molestation. Was yeah, the they history. get into you know, and then they. They hook up with somebody, and it turns out, you know, it's a pimp. That it's takes a pimp. The, yeah. yeah, you it, know, exactly. No, the industry is so much different today. I wouldn't recommend that any girl get into the business. To tell you the truth, when I got into it, it uh, it was just a golden era, and people would directors, producers would take full on Hollywood scripts and just add the sex. So we had we had 120 page scripts. We had 50 person crews. Right, there was more stories, yeah. right? Like exactly. well, it, well, to it. Now they just have a scene. I, I mean, I remember. No, that's what I'm saying. Now it's just like I mean, color, crazy sex. I remember it's back not, in the it's day. Not scripted. It's yeah. Before before Ginger yeah. probably even started, they had color climax, which was just scenes. But then when all the American ones came out. I remember Anne Boleyn doing the Jane Bond movies. <laughs> they had these awful, right. awful stories, but they were trying to look like James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> they were so bad. They yeah. were brilliant. Yeah. Um, I, I love old porn. I, it's, it's comical. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's sexy. I was watching one of my old porns the other day, and it was a film, one of the films I did in Hawaii, and I'd forgotten that the poor guy came too quickly, and they didn't catch it on film. So we had to do what they call a sip, which is a fake internal pop. So I had an entire sex scene where the guy didn't come, where the guy didn't even Don't come. You like hate, today, I hate those movies, man. I want to see the cum in the face. I, I fucking, are you watch a movie and then you don't, you don't see the cum at the end of it. It's just fucking. Oh yeah, it's yeah. anticlimactic. No, yeah, no, exactly. I want to see that too. I definitely want to see that. But the girls today, you know, I meet a lot of them. You know, when I'm shooting them for my auction site. And I, I want to like hug them and wrap them up and protect them and take them away and tell them to go back to school. You know, they have these, these high hopes that they're going to become rich and famous. And those days are long gone. There's not going to ever be another porn star. I call them porn holes today. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's just, there's too many girls. It's a very transient industry. There's, there's over a thousand girls on any given day that, that are in the adult film industry. There's not enough work. Yeah. A lot of them uh, uh, escort on the side. A lot of them get into porn to make a name for themselves so that they can escort. I think Jenna Jameson was probably the last name that anyone's ever really... I think you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's a few now, yeah. but like you said, the, 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 you, the internet's completely full of porn. I was just going to say, everybody's giving it away. Everybody's yeah. showing it. It's, it's not and like it, there's anything... Yeah. There's nothing special. Special, right. exactly. There's no... There's no anticipation or build up or turn on it. It's just wham bam. And don't get me wrong, you know, I still watch the wham bam, but I don't it doesn't make my pussy throb like the old movies did where there was the build up. Mm -hmm. You know, and as I'm watching it I'm getting more and more turned on, waiting for them to actually fuck. I like that anticipation. I like that build up. Andrew, stop touching yourself. Yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know I, the the thing I remember oh, the most. Sex talk. The thing I remember the most about v, VHS tapes was y you'd watch one scene and that would be enough, and then the next time you'd watch the next scene. <laughs> Whereas yeah, a DVD, exactly. you end up watching the first scene every time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, now with DVDs and the internet, you just fast forward right. or not fast forward. That's too much hassle. I just want to see what I want to see. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I agree a hundred percent. Now let me go back a little bit. You said that you know there's all these girls on like drugs and that now. There was a lot of cocaine in, in the industry back in the day, right? There was in the entire entertainment industry. The eighties was just it was a party. But the one thing that I will say is most people did not do drugs while they were filming. The guys, if you did, you would get cocaine cock, you couldn't fuck. 
girls, you know, you, you, you don't want to have sex if you're doing coke. So it wasn't really on the sets as much as people think. Right. Um, it was just everywhere when it else. Happen, it, was, it was after or before. Right. You know, there, there were more. We were much more of a family back then. There weren't that many of us. You know, when, when I chose between the people I wanted to work with, there were, there were maybe a half a dozen guys. Mm. And that was it. Um, so we were very close and, you know, if I, if we did do things, we did it together, but mainly off camera. Um, what was I going to ask? Oh, is there any truth to the myth that most of the guys in porn are gay? God, well, I don't know today. I don't know. The only one that I know from back then that did boy, girl and girl, girl, wait, boy, boy, boy and girl, girl was Peter North. Oh, he did um, gay. I never knew he did gay. What was he? Matt Ramsey, I think, was his porn name. I knew, I knew him as as Peter North, but I, yeah, he had previous names, right? So I guess that's what that yeah. was. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was Matt Ramsey was his porn name, but you no, know, the guys back then they, they were you know your classic '70s and '80s porn stars with the big mustaches, and um, you know they thought they they were macho men, and uh, you know they weren't. The guy, the kind of guys that are in the movies today, where their bodies are shaped and they have the perfect, you know, physique. Like, uh, you know, they they were just real guys. We didn't have Viagra. And one of the things that that really bothers me about movies today is I can tell when I'm watching a guy that's taken something. Their dicks are hard before the scene starts. They can't come, and these poor girls are just you know, living through at, you know, two hours of fucking. Nobody wants to fuck for two hours. You get, um, you just don't. But that's what they do today. And the guys, a lot of them, because they've got the drugs in their system, the Viagra and, and Cialis and, and all of those things, they're not connecting with their partner. They're mm-hmm. off with their little reel in their head that they jack off to rather than getting into the girl that, that they're working with. Right. Oh. So when you made porn back then, was it just like a one-shot deal? You just did the whole scene and, you know, you moved around a little bit? Because I, my friend watches them make porn, and he says they stop and they change this and they do this, and then they do, you know, it's like a friggin' movie being put together. Well, that's the way it is today. And they, they'll say to you, you know, to the girls before they start filming, okay, we want these four positions. We want you to go from a blowjob to anal to mouth to, uh, you know, pile driver. And so they're told what to do and how to do it. One of the things that that I always uh, did when I was filming was I I talked to my director before we started filming and said, you know what, just let me do what I do. Let me go. Don't stop me. Don't interrupt me. Let me get lost in my partner and make this a really good scene. And most directors allowed me to do that. Um, Some of the girls, some of the talent, they need... They need direction. Um, I personally, I like sex, so it was just natural to me. And if somebody told me to stop and get into this position, I would, I would get out of the, the zone that I was in. Hmm. So were you, you were friends with Tracy Lords until the whole thing went down, or you? No, I was never friends with Tracy. No, not many people were. The only person that really liked Tracy was Tom Byron. Uh, nobody really liked her. She was not a nice person. She was never friendly to people. She was always cold and hard, um, swore like a truck driver. She was just, she was just mean. You know, there wasn't, it wasn't sexy and fun and her little girl voice, you know, it was just, there was something wrong and most people did not like her. What do you think about the story she tells that all the movies that you see she was in were made from like 12 different movies just edited, which I don't believe for a Oof. second. I made six movies with her. She's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember reading in a book. Oh, yeah, they made like 12 or 13. We filmed 12 or 13 movies, and out of that, they got 50 movies. <laughs> oh, no. No. She wishes. She needs to go back to school and do a little different math. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. So who was your favorite to work with back then? Go. I, I see you did, uh, you know, the XM show with Christy Canyon. Was she one of your favorites to, back then? You know, I had this thing. Um, I hated girls that were gay for pay. I never liked to work with girls that were having sex just for the money that didn't like being with girls. Mm-hmm. So what I, I did was I went to Jim Seth, my agent, and I said to him, all right, I want to be the first, when girls come in that have never been with a girl before, I want to be the first one they have sex with so that they'll enjoy it, so that they'll learn how to do it. 
and I was Christy Canyon's first girl. She'd never licked pussy before in her life. And so what I did was I had this little trick that would teach you how to lick pussy. I would put, um, there used to be this little lip, lip balm called Rachel Perry. It was a little waxy, watermelon flavored lip balm, you know, like a, just if your lips are chapped. But it, it was uh, waxy. So I would put that on Get my the pussy. Fuck out of here. I would put that on my, my pussy lips, my clit, all You're over my sick. pussy, and then have the girl lick it off, kind of like the peanut butter thing. So, you know, and it, it was hard to lick off. So Christy, you know, you know, always jokes about it. And that she learned to lick pussy from my little my little trick, and she was one of my favorite girls to work with. I loved Christy. I loved working with Amber. Um, I loved working with oh, Barbara Dare. was one of my all-time favorite girls. She was just amazing. Um, what about Amber Lynn? Sure. What about Amber Lynn? Love Amber. Love Amber. Yeah, I remember yeah. The, the first movie I ever saw, saw was uh, Hollywood Heartbreakers with Tracy Lords, Amber Lynn. Uh, I think Peter North might have been in it. Um, Tom Byron might have been in it. Uh, I can't remember who the other girl was. I, I honestly don't remember. But that was the first one I ever saw, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> you know? uh, oh, you know who else is amazing and still to this day? Nina Hartley. Yeah, I'd like Nina to. Get, I'd like to get her on the show. She's she's still doing stuff, right? I think. Yeah, she is. You know what? I she's can like um, sixty or something. <laughs> she looks amazing. Yeah. No, she looks fucking amazing. And if you send me a text uh, later and remind me, I'll hook you up with Nina. Yeah, I would definitely she, like to interview her because she was one. Uh, she was before you. She was doing it, right? No, she started about six months after. Oh, me. really? Yeah, she started about six months after me. Hmm. Hey, Paul. Um, oh, Big A's got a question. Lisa DeLue was wonderful. Lonnie Sanders was wonderful. Most of the girls, the, the only two people that I ever had a problem with in porn are uh, Tracy Lords and Ron Jeremy. And hey, what's the deal with Ron Jeremy? And he texts me. I was reading... I was reading this thing saying, you know, there was, there was some allegation of rape years ago, and then there was more girls that were going to do something. Ronnie raped me on my first movie. Uh, I was in Hawaii, and I had a, 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 a love affair, I guess, with Jerry Butler. We were together all the time. We fucked on film, off film. We were we, we were a couple for a while. And there was one day that Jerry and I were on the beach having sex. We weren't filming. We were just going at it. There was a tall cliff above us, and Ronnie was up on the cliff. And he hollered down, can I come join you? And Jerry and I both said no. And Ronnie went away, and Jerry and I finished fucking, and he walked me back to my condo. He went to his condo. I went inside, went upstairs to the bathroom, and Ron was hiding behind the door. And he pushed me over the sink, and he raped me. Um, I didn't tell anyone for a long time because I thought, you know, I'm doing porn. Who's going to care? Yeah, right. You know, I was, I was embarrassed. Um, I felt, you know, not that I deserved it. No woman ever deserves it, but I felt that because I was doing porn, I, I didn't have a voice. Right. And about wow. five years later, I, I came out with it, and it turned into this. Uh, there were there was a website where people were voting if Ron was telling the truth or if I was telling the truth, and it just it got ugly. There were so many. I had dozens of women, dozens, that that contacted me, and the say the story was the same every single time. Ron still carries with him to this day his comrade. There is the DNA from every girl that he has raped on that, that comrade. Yeah. It's the same filthy, disgusting one that he's always had. I don't think he's oh ever watched God. it. And he's a pig. He's an awful person. And he preys on the girls that, you know, you say no. Everybody says no. But he doesn't. He, we, I actually confronted him with uh, Veronica Hart. We went to lunch one day, and Veronica's a friend of mine, and she said, let's get this out in the open. There's too much going on here. And we sat down, and she said, tell Ronnie what your memory is. And I told him. And he said to me afterwards that I have the same memory. That's what happened. But I thought no meant yes. How the fuck does no mean yes? Did you ever no, do any no scenes? No means no. Did you ever do any legitimate scenes with Ron Jeremy? Uh, yes, I've done my very first everything I ever shot on film was with Ron. Hmm. Um, before I went to Hawaii, I, I said to my agent, I don't think that, oh, what if I can't do this? What if I get in front of the camera and I, right. I, I just can't physically do it? 
Um, and he said, we, you should do something to practice. And it was a loop directed by Michael Carpenter. And I did two loops in the same day. They were eight millimeter. They had no sound. And Ron was the first person that I worked with. And hmm. after that, I, I, you know, I, I, after working with him just on that scene, I said, I, he's on my no list. I don't want to work with him. I don't care for him. That was before the rape. In the movie we were shooting in Hawaii, he plays my husband. Right. But there's not supposed to be any sex. Well, hmm. I was obligated and contra- contracted to do so many sex scenes. My leading man, Jerry Butler, was committed to do another film in back in, in New York. So he flew back to New York. I had one more sex scene that I had to shoot so under contract. Stuck. You got stuck right there. The only person that was there, the only male talent left was Ron Jeremy. So they wrote that into the script. And this is, it was awful. This is after he raped me. And I remember I was on my hands and knees and he was behind me. And he said to me, I'm just going to put the tip in. And the camera wasn't rolling yet. I turned around and decked him, punched him right in the face and said, get the fuck out of me. And it turns out the cameras were rolling. They were, they hadn't said action yet, but it's caught on tape, me punching Ron Jeremy in the face. Do you have the, that clip? No, I don't. Oh, uh, okay. So how many other girls no. do you think that w- went through that with him? I personally have spoken to dozens. I wow. was... I was stripping at a club, uh, one of a deja vu club in the Midwest. And after I did my show, I always did a little question and answer talk show. Somebody asked me about Ronnie and I said, it's a good thing he can suck his own dick because nobody else wants to. <laughs> and everybody, everybody <laughs> laughed. And, uh, I, I was taking Polaroids and signing autographs after the, after that. And this woman and her husband came up to me and she said, why did you say that about Ron? And I said, because he raped me. The woman started to cry. She said, oh, my God, he raped me, too. This was a, a, a civilian. This was a woman. She and her husband owned a video store. They hired Ron to come in and sign autographs. Ron raped her in the back room. She told her husband he didn't believe her until he heard me say that he had raped me. He thought that, you know, it was Ron. She just went that she wanted to fuck him. No, he's he's got a problem. He needs help. Um, I, he, I, he doesn't get turned on unless it's an act of force. Well, and I guess it's too late to do anything about that, right? Pretty much. That's sick. Well, I, it, when I, I started to do something about it probably 10 years ago, maybe 12. And, you know, like I said, I had all these girls come forward and everybody told their story and I kind of became the spokesperson for, you know, Ronnie rates. Wow. And I, I have, you know, I have a child, I have a son and um, it just became too public, and, and when when some asshole put up the website where you voted whether I was raped or not, I just went, you know what? I can't do this. I I I, I don't want to be that spokesperson. I don't want to live through it again. Um, but I will put it out there and let people know that it's not okay and that it's happened. And hopefully, you know, some of the young girls have have heard me say this. And when Ron tries to do it to them, they'll stop him. They'll right. scream. They'll punch. They'll yell. You know, I wish I would have punched him at the time or screamed. You know, I just cried and said no. He's the Bill Cosby of porn. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. So, I, but I mean, you haven't heard anything of him doing that more recently, where something could be done about it, right? Oh, I, yeah. There's, I, I shoot girls all the time that tell me the same thing. No, he is continuing to do it. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah, isn't it though? And that's the only person you had that kind of experience with. Oh yeah, no, that was that, that was, was enough. It. No, that was enough. More than enough, yeah. All right, I got a phone call, Chris. You're on dysfunctional with Ginger Lynn. Hey, Ginger, big big Hi, fan. Hi, Chris. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank Good. You. Um, I got a question for you. Did, did you ever work with uh, Randy West? He was oh, Randy yeah. West was like one of the funniest guys. Like to me, watching movies back then. Whoever he was with, he is so funny. He's, I can't tell. Yeah, I said, boy, he would be funny to get, you know, to get on the show. But I didn't know if you'd work with him or not. I, I did work with him. He's got an incredible sense of humor. He was so much fun, um, and he's just just a good guy. He lives here in Las Vegas now. He loves to golf. He, you know, does his own thing. 
such a fantastic. I ran into him a couple of years ago. I was at a car wash sitting on the steps waiting for my car to be washed, and some guy comes up and sits next to me. He's on the cell phone, and I look over, and I'm like, Randy? <laughs> and it was so, he's just, he's just like the coolest guy you will ever meet. Fantastic. And I remember a movie because I, my, I think my, well, my favorite porn star growing up was was uh, Christy Canyon, and I know you had worked with her and 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 Tori Wells, and you know, like those were like the classic, you know, porn stars. You know, that's guys. Her like Asia Carrera. She yeah. was oh. yeah, yeah. Asia Carrera is one of my favorites. And I tell you what, I, I Nina Marley still you you're right. For as being as old she is, she still is in phenomenal shape. She really does look great. Oh yeah, and she's amazing to have sex with. She's got she's got medical training and <laughs> no that sounds really silly. But what if she, she gave you a gynecological ex- exam or something? You <laughs> <laughs> can do things with the clit you would not can't even imagine. She knows how to please. Mm, and yeah. it was funny, Nina Nina and I did a movie together years ago called Ten Little Maidens. And that was the closest to sex we had ever come. In the scene, she fucks me with a daikon radish. And that's all the <laughs> sex that we had. <laughs> 26 <laughs> years later, there is a company called Triangle Films, and Nina and I had sex for the first time. It's called When, when Nina Met Ginger, When Ginger Met Nina. I can't remember which how the names go, but we had both been waiting 26 years to fuck each other, and we were like fish flopping, one of us, because both of us wanted to please the other one, so I'm on top, and she'd flip over, and she'd be on top, and it just went back and forth, and she is probably the best woman that I've ever had in bed. You wow. know, one thing I, I like with, with lesbian porn is they don't do it enough. They don't 69 enough. Yeah. I'm, well, it's you know what? Now, I think now... <clears throat> especially now I think back back then you would see it more and you it just was hotter you know what I mean like yeah. the porn was just hotter back then I don't know if it was the the women or the the uh, the screenplays or whatever it was I think it was the fact they but, said, Ginger was saying that they, they set up a bit of a story so it was more real it was like the girl next door now it's just wham bam fuck fuck and you know yeah well, you know what's funny is now what they do you know some of the things they do I think because they run out of storylines or they don't know how to put storylines together, they do these, you know, like porn, like not the Brady Bunch, not Gilligan's Island, Triple X. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. They've run out of storylines. There's been too many pizza delivery men. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A- extra anchovies, please. <laughs> well, and I think I think that, that the main difference is the passion and the chemistry yeah. between the people. You know, when, when I, I worked on, on a set probably about 10 years ago. It was one of the last things I ever did. And I remember walking onto, I, I just got out of makeup. I walked onto the set, and Julia Ann and a, another guy that I, did, I don't know who he was were about to do a scene together. They were sitting on this red velvet sofa, and both of them were on their cell phones. They weren't talking to each other. They weren't. You know, I, I got in trouble so much for making out before we started shooting and messing up my makeup. You know, it was I was there to fuck and be with the person I was with. And right. now it's it's a job. Right. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's real bad. I mean, the girls, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's porn. You, you're going to get some of the hottest the hottest women out there, but it's, it's robotic. You know what I mean? It doesn't, like, compared to porn back in the day, you know, it's, very robotic. I know, so, I know, I know like, 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 to me, like, Christy Kang, I mean, I'll say, I mean, every guy has, but, like, I mean, I don't know how many times I've watched. <laughs> 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 He's hot, though. I love Christy. I always love Christy. You know what it is? Is people like Ginger, Christy, even Tracy, if you want to go that far, they're all girls that are, like, next door. They're not, the ones now are just little prim Barbie dolls that, like, you know, it's just whatever. Yeah, very, <laughs> I'm not saying I don't like that look, but it's just, to me, back then was, you know, you don't see like a Tory Wells now. You know what I mean? Like anybody that looks like that or has that, you know, or even like porn, you know, even like I said, like, you know, the guys that were in porn were, were funny. I mean, Peter North, I remember, you know, 
he did a movie. I, I forget what it was. It was called Rambo. Yeah, instead of Rambo, it was called Rambo. He <laughs> <laughs> was Rambo. He got the fucking headband on. He's all ripped. He got the shit. I mean, shit like that was funny. You know right. what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. It was, you know, it just it's a different. It definitely, is a different. Uh, Era now. It's a different era, yeah. And don't get me wrong, there are some pe- some talent and some people who do enjoy what they're doing and and do it right and do it well. But it's it's far and few between. It's a different market. People want the quick scenes now. They don't want the story anymore. You know, it's just people. You know, right. people don't want that. They want to go on the internet and watch a eleven minute clip, and that's the end of it. You know. Right. Right. So In Chris- all fairness, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So with Ginger, when you when you came back in the porn around two thousand, I guess it was, did you, yeah. were you still the girl next door, or did you have to kind of adapt to how it was being done then? No, I was so lucky. You know, I went to the three big companies. I went to Vivid, Wicked, and VCA, and told them I wanted to make a comeback, and um, negotiated with with all three of them, and decided on VCA. Russ Hampshire was one of the, the most stand-up guys that I've ever met. When I had my, my trial um, of all of the, the adult film producers that they wanted me to testify against, all but two testified against me. They were told, if you don't do and say what we want, we're going to go after you next. The two people that stood up for me were Suze Randall and Russ Hampshire. And when I decided to go with DCA, um, they let me write my own scripts. I came up with my own storylines. Um, I got to do my own casting. So it was kind of the last of the golden years. Right. You know, they, they let me do it the good old-fashioned way, and I had a blast. I was signed on for three movies for in one year. I, I extended the contract for another year and did four more. I had such a good time. Wow. Because it says the last thing you did was around 2008. No, that's uh, it was actually 2007. Okay. Um, Wikipedia's full last... of shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I, I know it's only a year off, but I yeah. know it when I when I stopped. And um, ironically, I don't. It's not even ironic. Sadly, my last scene was with Ron Jeremy. Wow. Mm. Oh, I didn't know Ron was such a. I mean, I knew he, like. I heard some things that he was a dick, but I didn't. I didn't realize he was such a scumbag. I like I, that. I yeah. just read his response to when you when you first you know talked about this, like you know six seven years ago, whenever it was. He had responded, um, but we did we did radio together, and she we were cool. I, I was I was a problem, <laughs> you know. Well, right. the thing is, I'm not a mean person. I run into Ron on different occasions. You know, we were at different events at the same event. And I'm not a bitch. I don't say anything to him. It, it, you know, it was 30 years ago. But, you know, I'm not his best friend. Are we cool? I mean, to the point where I'm not going to walk up and punch him, but we're not friends by any means. Do, do you, you know, there's do no you way. Think, do you think that that's really the wrong way to be because you're kind of letting him off the hook, kind of like the girls with Cosby did until they all started coming out? Well, the fact that I brought it up and, and put it out there, I think is enough and enough people know me and, and respect me enough that they, they know I'm telling the truth. Um, that, you know, people are aware today of what Ron did. Wow. Yeah. Right. Pretty crazy. And what he continues to do. I think Chris is a bit upset that we, I actually knew this before, but I just remembered, but when you said that Peter North started in gay porn, I probably pissed him off. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, I didn't know that, but I mean, I did hear that the porn, the guys that make the most money are guys that do the gay, you know, gay scenes, I guess. What, what was the name of the guy from England that just pretty much f- fucked the girls in the face so fucking hard and like, you know, it was like a real piece of shit and I think he went to jail for it. I wish I could remember. Uh, his... Was that Christian? Uh, what was his name? What was his name? His porn name? I just like remember. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um... Was he the bald guy? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think I don't know his poor name. Um, yeah, you know what? He was actually very upfront with everybody about what he did. He right. made it very clear that he did gay and straight porn. Had no issues with it. If you didn't like it, fuck you. Yeah, he didn't care. You know the, what it is? Is in England the 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 government? Even if you're consenting, the government can still tell you what the fuck you can do. Or at least what you know what you fuck you can sell videos of. Let's put it that way. So even though oh, really? if everybody and everyone in the room is consenting, 
you know, if if he does something that you know is violent towards women, you know, in England they sense that any movie that involves has a sex scene that involves violence, anything in there that shows that the woman is enjoying it even for a second has to come out. Really? Yeah, they won't. They won't allow. Like when that movie, uh, the fuck was it called? Um, oh, I wish I could remember the name of it now. But there was a, mo- a, a movie. Oh, oh, the Bunny Game. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's a shitty. Yeah. It's called the Bunny Game. And this dude, it was like basically he was tying women up and raping them and dressing up in a diaper and doing all kinds of shit. And like half, <laughs> and half the movie, they they got rid of half the movie. Both been in a diaper. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, I missed that, that one. That was ten years ago. I'll send you the link. <laughs> uh, I don't think you want to see. It. <laughs> yeah, I need Ginger to help me get gas. I don't want her to change the number. <laughs> you need to scare her off. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, well, so, Chris, go ahead. Chris Canyon and I heard about the, the diaper porn <laughs> and so we, we hosted a radio show together for years and we actually put on adult diapers <laughs> peed in them and then had a diaper fight like a pillow fight oh my <laughs> it, was, God. it was so disgusting it was hysterical <laughs> So, you know, but if you can't have fun with what's out there, then then you shouldn't be watching it. You know, if you take it too seriously, um, as far as censorship censorship goes, I, I believe that the adults are consenting that the government should stay the fuck out of it. Right. It, it, yeah. You know, exactly. It's my body. Have you have you ever choose. have you ever been a fluffy? A floppy? Fluffy. Oh, a fluffy, a fluff girl. No, not a fluff girl. A fluffy is where they people dress up as animals and have sex. Oh, 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 oh! No, but one of my one of my good friends is one, and it does not sound sexy to me at all. He said that the average temperature inside one of those suits, if they don't have some sort of air conditioning inside, is 140 degrees. They are miserably hot, sweaty. Like what well, you know? Because I thought it was kind of hot and sexy, you know, right. dressing up like an animal fucking. But apparently, it's 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 really hot and uncomfortable. You you know you're way too into it if you have a suit with fucking air conditioning. <laughs> 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 and that's Paul's fetish. He pulls in the right. bestiality. I would. I would. I would no, actually, let, let me tell you a true story. I was going to say, yeah, I'd like to fuck Jessica Rabbit from fucking. Uh, you you know, did say that. Yeah, you know, I'm into that. My wife, right? She doesn't really like porn. She's we've watched it on occasion, but someone right. sent me a, a, a couple of bestiality videos, and I shit you not, she sat there and she watched the whole fucking <laughs> four hours. She was, she's like, and it wasn't like she was trying to make out like it was one of those. Oh my god, there's a fucking out say. Oh, oh my god, she, he's fucking a chicken. <laughs> what about that one? Eighty six is still fucking. Oh my god. Yeah, we yeah we that had a video. Like, we had we had a vi- we had a video called eighty seven and still banging. Yeah. And it was a, oh yeah, and, and, and yeah, some eighty-seven-year-old woman with do yourself a favor, oh, Ginger. I don't, with like you, gray pubic. She had like two pubes, and, and every time the guy uh, looked at her, he lo- he lost his rod. Oh. <laughs> All you see is this floppy dick. Yeah, yeah. To go sick, into. he's a sick fuck. He's some sick shit. There's another. There's another one called. There's another one actually called Century Sex, which you can imagine how fucking bad that is. Oh, no. <laughs> do me, do me a favor, Ginger. If you're if you're fucking broke and homeless, you can come live with us before you have to do an 87 year old porn video. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I'll give you my address right now. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't want to see that and fuck up the, the images I have of when you were fucking 25. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh no. So uh, let me ask you. A you don't have any on your auction site. You don't have any uh, used. Uh, panties from Crispy <laughs> for sale. You know what? I talked to her last week, and she's putting up. She's got uh, a bunch of stuff that she's going to be putting up in the next couple of weeks. So we don't right now. We had some before. Um, I'll either that or tell her to wear posting. a pair of panties. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> she's, she's got, you guys, you don't understand. Like as a guy, you have like fantasy. You got your fantasy girl. Crispy was. Growing up was my fantasy girl. So. We get it, Chris. You like Christy Canyon. Yeah, I want a pair of her panties. We get it. We want to sniff her crotch. I know. I yes. Get it. <laughs> okay. It's a nice one. They smell wonderful. <laughs> In England, uh, the people used to sell panties uh, and uh, all kinds of stuff, but then they decided it was illegal to sell anything with bodily fluids on it. Oh, my God. Yeah, so the, the thing they're doing right now to try and get away with that is they have little red lollipops. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and they yeah. they shove them up and down in their pussies, and they sell them as pussy pops. 
that's actually a good idea. No, I'm just saying that's what they. That's the only thing they they figured out how to get away with it. If you if you Google <laughs> Google <laughs> pussy pops in the UK and you'll find all these chicks selling <laughs> pussy pops. I, you know what? I'm going to start doing Tootsie Pops on my on my auction site. I think that's a brilliant idea. That is. I want my 10%. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I would suggest, Paul, is that you actually put your panties up. Hey, if I can get a couple of bucks from my oh, wife will did. be happy. My wife, my wife says I can fucking I can I can blow Chris if I get paid for it. That's what she basically said. <laughs> <laughs> just send me the money. So, so Christy, between between you, you know, you doing porn and leaving and getting back, you, you started doing some regular movies. Did you go back to porn because you didn't do too well in that field? Did you have trouble getting into that field because of your history, or? You know, I, I had a lot of difficulty in the beginning, but I I studied at the Beverly Hills Playhouse for six years with Milton Casellas, and um, I did my first film that was called Wild Man. During the filming of that, someone else by the name of Rick Sloan hired me for the Vice Academy movies. And I started doing a lot of big roles in B movies and then small roles in A movies. Um, I, I've done two films this year, and I've got one more I'm doing in December, uh, mainstream films. But no, the main reason I came back to porn mm -hmm. um, is because I was single for like five years. And... I was having sex with civilians, and they just didn't cut it. They just, I couldn't find a good lover. That's like Dennis Hoff. Somebody. Dennis Hoff doesn't have sex with civilians. He only has sex with his, his hookers. Well, they, you know, I needed sex with somebody that knew what they were doing. Right. And it was like five years. I just kept getting duds. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the work, and they're not getting back, and they say are. They don't know what they're doing. and. Right. So I, I came back to have some good loving. Did you ever keep any things only for your private life, like anal or anything like that? Was there anything that, that your, your boyfriend would get and the porn people wouldn't get? Nope. That's the problem right there. That's the problem. So, some, well, some, dude, you know what? some dude with six inches isn't going to be too happy trying to make you feel the sides after fucking Ron Jeremy's been in your asshole. Exactly. Well, you know what? I'm going to take that statement back. I have given my boy, I have a boyfriend that I've been with for coming up on eight years, and I have given him something that I've never given to any other man, and that's loyalty. I have not slept with another man in nearly eight years. But, is we, uh, my but, but if you want to bring a woman home, is that okay? Oh, of course yeah. it is. Of course it fucking is. It's retarded. <laughs> yeah, I bring him home as often as possible. Right. My friend yeah. actually had a bisexual girlfriend, and she used to bring girls home every weekend, and then she fucked off with one of the girls. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not... I, I'm about 60-40. I'm 60% men, 40% women, so I'm yeah. never going to run off with a, with a woman, but I do like sex with women. Cool. Uh, Kevin, you're on Dysfunctional. Yeah, I'm listening. Oh, of course you are. Are you touching yourself? Well, <laughs> Hi, you Kevin. Like Hi. So, How did you actually get started? I think we point? covered what that already. What made you want to do it? There is something that clicks in a girl's mind somewhere down the line. It says, hey, I, you know, girls love sex just as much as guys do. I understand that, but... To actually put it out there and do it as a profession, something has to click that you actually well, you know, need money. For me, it was the beautiful redhead that I met in Jim South's office at World Modeling Agency. Um, you know, meeting with her and asking her the questions and her telling me how much fun it was and how much she enjoyed it and the great sex that you had gave me... The, the, the thought, the feeling, the desire to make adult films. But I still only thought I would do just two of them, and that would be it. Um, but I, I found that I, I really enjoyed myself. But it's definitely the I'm, money I'm, that made you look at that advert in the paper, though, right? Yeah. When I first, the, the, the initial reason that I answered the ad was, you know, I, I was working 70 hours a week and, you know, making $500. <laughs> So well, I, I I'm needed... 53 years old, so I'm I'm not new to you know the 80s and the 70s of porn. I've seen it a little. Right. Okay. But What's you your point? Are, you're an absolute. I mean, <laughs> if I go back into the 80s and I want to see some decent porno, I go back to the 80s, and it's 
it's, it's like classic movies, like good movies that you want to see again. Yeah, real movies sex. with real sex with real people. Right, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah, it was, today, it was really good. I, mean, I keep asking people, I'm like, if you look at any of the porno that's out there today, all the men are shaving off their pubic hair, all the women are shaving off their pubic hair. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, I really I, didn't understand it. I never did that. I I have my pussy lips are shaved, and I have a little blonde triangle on the top. I tried shaving it off one time, and I just I'm not prepubescent. You know, I'm a woman, and I like that. You know, when I put my hands down my panties, I like feeling that soft little mound of hair. I exactly. think it's sexy. It's, it's not I like do. a scraggly beard on a guy's face, but. Kevin, you like you oh. like the fucking one where the the hair goes down to the knees. <laughs> yeah, he likes the seventies. He likes the seventies uh, gash. <laughs> <laughs> I re I remember the first time I went down to my wife. She had hair like that back then, and I got a fucking ha mouthful of fucking hair and pubes, and I'm like, what? what's so fucking great about this? Hey, you were lucky the first time we did it. You knew where the hole was. It's like dental floss. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. So, so let's let's just talk about your mainstream movies again. You so you you did a couple of movies. Did you get into Young Gun too because you knew Charlie, or was that before you knew Charlie? No, I actually um, auditioned for Young Guns too, uh, and I didn't meet Charlie until after that. So my my mainstream work has been pretty much. Because of my, my, my drive, my ambition, my not giving up, um, like I said, I studied for six years at the Beverly Hills Playhouse, and you know, I, I've gotten some really good roles. Um, I've been very lucky. Uh, you know, the what, uh, NYPD Blue, Silk Stockings, mm -hmm. I did a children's series called Super Force. Um, That's quite a turnaround right there. <laughs> now, there's... The biggest film that I ever auditioned for, and this is, oh, I auditioned for the film Casino, and Martin Scorsese wanted me to come in to read for the role. I, I went in, did my first read, got a call back the second time. The third time I went in, did a screen test, and then there was a three-month period that we were waiting. My dad sent me a little card said, with a cat hanging from a tree saying, hang in there. <laughs> Um, I was up for the role that Sharon Stone did. It was between me and Sharon Stone. When I auditioned for the role, the character's name was not Ginger. It, Martin Scorsese was, the, the rumor is that he was so upset that he didn't get me. The studios didn't want me, but he did. That they changed, he put, he does little sneaky things in his films. He changed the character's name to Ginger. That's funny. So yeah. how, how many times do you, did you get turned away from, interv from interviews? From, uh... Fuck. When he or auditions, or I'm retarded. <laughs> because um, of who I, you I've are. I've never actually been turned away. I've had I've had some odd experiences. Um, you know, the the way it works is, you know, I have an agent. There's roles that come up. My agent submits me for them, and then, you know, you either get an audition or you don't. Um, I had an audition. Suze Randall, the photographer, set it up for me. And it was for Beverly Hills Cop Part Two, wow. and the character. I, yeah, it was. I was so excited. I hired an acting coach. I worked for three weeks on on the character. It was a a happy go lucky bimbo waitress in a bar oh, that thinks that thinks that John Ashton is the vice president. I know. I remember that. I remember that scene. Yeah. She, she, okay. she said, you so, said you look much younger in person, Mister. That was the well, line. Well, what happened yeah. was. I drove onto the lot, got my pass, I walked into the casting office, and I was wearing a little white dress that had a triangle cut out in the, in the, for my belly. Mm -hmm. So you could see my tummy. And I walked in, and the receptionist said, are, are you wearing underwear? And I what said, is no. <laughs> you know, it was a very odd. This is a mainstream audition. And she, mm -hmm. said, she said, well, I'll be right back. And she runs off, comes back, and she says, I can't find any panties. You're going to have to go in and audition as you are. I I'm thinking, this is the most bizarre thing I've ever heard of. I walk into the room, Tony Scott is there, the casting director is there, and an actor that I'm supposed to read with. And the first thing out of Tony's mouth is, let's get a nude Polaroid. 
And I said, I don't think so. And he said, how about a topless poet? And I said, no, why don't I just read for the part? So I read for the part. Now, remember, this is a non-sexual role. It's, you know, you've seen the movie. I read for it, and Tony Scott says to me, I want you to read this like you're the biggest slut in the world. All you want to do is fuck everybody. So I I suck it up, and I read it as he wants me to, and I get done with my audition, and I said, you know what? I don't think I'm really right for this role. And I walked out. They had no intentions of casting me at all. They wanted to meet the porn star, and I had too much pride to lower myself to that place. I had never fucked anybody for a part. I've never had, you know, the casting couch in porn. I've met more sleazy people in mainstream Hollywood than I have in porn. Porn people are honest. They just, it's right out there, in your face, no holds barred. And, And I respect that. Wow. Where Hollywood is is. is I'm surprised that didn't happen to you. I'm surprised that didn't happen to you more. No, yeah, that's the only the occasion. Thing. Kevin, your phone's breaking up. I'm going to hang up on you, okay? No, no, no. I can't hear what you're saying. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Anyway. He's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ginger. Go ahead. That's okay. No, but the, the, my, the things I'm the most proud of in the mainstream world, um, I did a video for Metallica called Turn the Page. Right. And it was... Hey, you were in that video, right? I'm, I'm, yeah. I think that's yeah. what she meant by I did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris, you're supposed to be no, the not annoying not. one. What are you doing? <laughs> Say what? You're supposed to be the not annoying person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, go Jesus ahead. Yeah. So, um, I, Jonas Ackerlin directed it. I'm just very, very proud of the work that I did in that. He made it into a short film that actually won some awards at the Cannes Film Festival. And then I've been lucky enough, Rob Zombie has cast me in, in three of his movies. Uh, I was in The Devil's Rejects. He cast me in The Lords of Salem, but I turned, I wasn't able to do the role for personal reasons. And then I just did 31. So my, my career, I, I work more than most actors will ever work. Do I work enough in mainstream to survive? No. No, but you know, I've, I, I've, I'm, I, I'm an artist. I have um, a website where I sell my art. Um, Is that what you call it? And <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's called gingerlandart.com, and you can see my. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the auction site. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's, I've got three websites. Yeah, I have gingerland.com where you can see all the oldies and goodies where I write my weekly blog. Right. Um, that's updated every day. I've got gingerlinauctions.com and then I have gingerlinart.com. Mm-hmm. So I'm one of those girls that will always be a survivor. When I when I stopped doing porn, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I'd been doing it for the last, you know, for two years and three months and I thought, what am I going to do next? And I went down to a bead store in downtown Los Angeles. I put $3,000 worth of beads on my credit card and I designed jewelry for two years. I sold my jewelry on consignment up and down Sunset Boulevard, uh, Melrose Boulevard, and uh, there was one other boulevard, uh, Hollywood Boulevard. And I, I survived and paid my mortgage on my house by designing jewelry and selling it. So, you know, I'm not. I, I will always have something to fall back on. Did you now? Did you sell it? Jewelry. Did you sell it as just jewelry or as Ginger Lynn's jewelry? Um, it was sold as it was Ginger Picks, P-I-X. Okay. Um, that was the name of my corporation. And so I had these little black uh, designer things that I put the jewelry on, little cases, and, and they said Ginger Picks. So it was actually really nice. Really nice. So that's one of the things that I try and tell the, the new girls that I meet when I shoot them for Ginger Lynn auctions is to save their money and think about their future. You know, the average shelf life of a porn girl today is about six months. And you're used up and washed up, and you're over. Right. Wow. Yeah, there's very few so, that you I could even remember from six months ago. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I try to. I'm kind of the the den mother now. You know, I try to give them good advice and help them to make good choices, uh, and and hope that they do because there 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 is life after porn, uh, but you have to plan it and you need to make good decisions. Right. So was Charlie Sheen a good boyfriend? He was awesome. He was wonderful. He was kind. He was sweet. He was charming. He was giving. Um, so he's not the piece just, of shit they make him out to be, right? 
I never experienced any of that. And right. we were together nonstop for two years and then off and on for another three. And mm-hmm. I never saw a speck of violence. Um, you know, he was the guy that I'd get up in the morning or wake up and he'd be standing there with a cup of coffee by the side of the bed. Um, he, he's the guy that we were, you know, driving down the road and you saw a homeless person once. He did a U-turn, went to a sporting goods sh- store and bought him a sleeping bag. And we went back to that homeless guy and gave him a sleeping bag. Right. Charlie is one of the nicest and nicest people that I've ever met. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't seen him in 20 years. People do change. Right. But the Charlie that I knew was an amazing man. He had a, he had some drug issues when he was with you, right? You took him to rehab, right? Uh, his parents did an intervention while we were dating. He went to rehab, and uh, we got sober together and stayed that way for the last 14 months of our relationship. Wow, that's cool. Yes. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah I'm. It, and that that was. I mean, I'm not saying he's no one now, but that when you were with him, he that was like really at the peak of when he was everywhere. Oh yeah, that was right after Platoon, and when he did the Rookie, and uh, you know, he was working a lot. Yeah, he did some great. He did some great movies. He really movie. did. Yeah, he really did. Did you have any trouble with with other girls around him all the time, or was that just how Charlie is, and you had to just deal with it? No, I brought girls home. You know, oh. I solved that problem by just bringing, <laughs> bringing over my girlfriend. <laughs> so we both got what we needed. How much do you charge to brainwash my wife? Can I send her to Las Vegas? And you, I wanted to, come, I wanted to come back having uh, bringing other women. I, I told my wife, I don't even have to fuck them. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice, right? But if I just want to watch my wife get fucked by uh, by eating out by another girl, that's it. I would. Your wife sounds beautiful. I, she's definitely my type. I'll do it for free. Holy Send her fuck! Up. I've got, I'm, whoa, I'm gonna. I will text room. you. I will text you a hey, photo of her. Oh my god! I'm, I'm fucking flying. We're going to Vegas now. <laughs> <laughs> the show's over. I'm going to the airport. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh. Uh, well, I don't mean to be rude, but I've got dinner plans. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. we appreciate. Is there, is there anything? Is there anything else that you you'd like to plug or anything? Obviously, because you've spent a lot of time with us, and I don't want to be unfair. So, any you want to plug your websites again? Anything? Sure. I mean, the easiest thing to do is to go to gingerlin dot com. Right. That will redirect you. If you can go and you go to my art site from there. You can go to my auction site from there, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter name is blame it on ginger. Right. And uh, just, you know, keep supporting me in my mainstream films and enjoy my, my porn films. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be anywhere without the people who enjoy my work. So I love my fans, and I just want to say thank you for being there and enjoying what I do. You, they, you made it fantastic. We love you, too. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do, you still, do, you still, do you make any money out of the old, old movies coming out on DVD and that, or not? Well, you know what? I was... I, I, I'm not a genius by any means, but I made some really good decisions. Right. And I was the first contract girl ever, and I was under contract with Vivid Video, and um, I had a good attorney, and I made a deal uh, in perpetuity. So um, I, I'm one of the few that that still makes money off of my films. That's great. You. That's great. Yeah. So you've definitely turned my wife around. Not in, not in just the sense that we're coming to Vegas next week. But um, in in the sense that you know she came into this going, I don't want to talk to a porn girl. What I didn't. Know, I wasn't fuck? like that. I, I was just fucking, in a bad mood. No, I no. You every, since I mentioned, I've been trying. I've I've been keeping it on the DL. He's a e- sex addict. Every I'm not. I'm a sex addict with her. Yeah, you are. I'm a sex addict with her. <laughs> if she just put out more, I wouldn't. I wouldn't need to watch your movies. But oh well. Put it this way, menopause sucks. It just sucks. It's not men <laughs> pause though. You know what I mean. No, it's more like PMS putting up a mention. Anyway, let's let let's let Ginger go. Chris, you have any more questions for Ginger, real quick? No. Uh, Just send those panties. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I, I know. Really nice I'll make sure to get on the. You uh, too. You take care right. of yourself. Thank you so much, Ginger. It was it was amazing. We really appreciate it. And I'm gonna text you a photo of her and get the information for Nina at the same time. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> such a All right, and Denise. Uh, yes. I I love the the sound of your titties. Come on out. <laughs> we'll just have to get rid of Paul. I just not bullshit. <laughs> not a problem. No, it's no, 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 no. She's gonna show up with like a gimp mask on and a fucking chain attached to my arm. She's not getting. I'm. I, it, you don't. You don't. You need a hacksaw to get me out of that room. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, Ginger. We'll let All you go. Right, Thank you so care. much. 
Take, Take care. care. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.